our ancestors might have not followed the meal plan of having breakfast, lunch and dinner, but they ate because they needed to survive. They couldn't just go grocery shopping to pick up some fruits, vegetables or meat. So they had to eat whatever they could find. Eating is for survival, but there's also something more to that. It is also about forming social bonds, instilling a sense of comfort and helps you cooperate and build trust. Before cultivation was introduced, we know that our ancestors ate meat. But the question is, did they eat plants as well? The answer is yes. Before 4 million years ago, our ancestors ate a surprising amount of fruits and leaves. They started to expand their diet by adding vegetables like tubers and roots as well as succulents but it wasn't until 2.6 million years ago that meat first became a significant part of the pre-human diet. So how do hunter-gatherers get energy when there's no meat? It turns out that a man is always backed up by a woman since the olden days. Man may be the hunter but a woman is the forager who with some help from children provides more calories during difficult times. When meat or fruit is scarce, they would fall back on plant foods exploring the flora. There is no one ideal human diet, but let us just try and see how the vegetarian diet of our ancestors was. How they found the food they ate also made them in some way. They would either pick up the berries and nuts they found and become gatherers or they would eat the leftover they find and become scavengers. Now for years, anthropologists have tried to study the diets of our ancestors and researchers are working hard to put the pieces of the food puzzle together. Focus was mainly on our ancestors of the Stone Age. They found that besides small amounts of meat, they got most of their nutrition from gathered fruits and nuts. Neanderthals may be big hunters, but they actually ate more plant material than expected. Surprising, I know. Homo erectus, on the other hand, stuck to a more paleolithic diet which was pretty risky because of the evidence of vitamin A poisoning as well as other poisonings and deficiencies discovered from some fossils. Besides meat and fish, they took full advantage of plants that grew in nearby lakes like a type of water lily, Uriel ferox, growing in dense clumps and produces starchy white seeds. Bulrushes were exploited for their starchy rhizomes most probably. Thistles may have been a treat in late spring or early summer as their seeds are a good source of oils and in the later months of the year, acorns would come into season. Water chestnuts were another good starch source back in the days and olives remains a core ingredient of Mediterranean diets to this day. We are familiar with some of these foods till today. Plants of vegetables and fruits are good for the body no doubt, but one drawback is that unripe plants secrete toxins to stop themselves from being eaten. In small amounts, they are of no harm, but if lots is taken in, it has a bad effect even causing death. So, in order for our ancestors to dodge that, they had to survive on different plants in a day instead of just one which created the variety. The discovery of the use of fire and the realization that it could be of use to prepare food is also a significant point, as it would have made some of the plants that weren't edible raw edible and therefore in return broadened a diet. So how exactly did researchers find out that our ancestors actually ate plants? There are many ways to find out the kind of diet a person is on and one of them is the teeth. Just by looking at the size and even alignment of the teeth and the positioning of the jaw, scientists can tell if one was feeding on hot food like nuts or chewing soft leaves. Studies show that stronger teeth mean a harder diet, and harder diet meant the need to chew hard plant materials like nuts. One particular study shed light on a little-known group of ancient humans known as Australopiths which had large, powerful jaws. It was suspected they had extremely powerful jaw muscles as well, similar to some modern-day primates. 
These morphological attributes of a powerful jaw and strong hard teeth seem to indicate they had the ability to produce large bite forces and therefore likely chomped down on a diet of hard or bulky food items such as nuts, seeds or underground resources like tubers. What's more is that scientists even found starch granules from plants on fossil teeth and stone tools which suggests humans may have been eating grains as well as tubers long enough to have gained the ability to tolerate them. Scientists can also look at the chemical makeup of the bones to get an idea of what our ancestors were eating. Archaeologists and other researchers have found and studied the remains of thousands of edible plants at a site in Israel that dates back to the Stone Age and learned a lot about what filled up our ancestors' bellies and revealed that it included all sorts of nuts, fruits, seeds and vegetables. You know, being a herbivore was not difficult. I mean fruits and vegetables don't run away after all, but they're also not calorie dense. The question that makes me wonder though is what people many years from now will think about the kinds of food we eat. Well, there's some food for thought when you sit down at the table for dinner tonight. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Do tell us what you thought of it in the comment section down below and do check our channel out for more videos related to our ancestors and remember to give us your love and support by liking our videos and subscribing to the channel.